I love Slayer, but just like I've said before, not every band is perfect. And when one of those bands has members in it that regret one of their own albums, that's more than enough reason for me to talk about it. This is a look back at the time Slayer went new metal in Diabolus and Musica. For those of you who are even remotely aware of metal, Slayer is a band that truly needs no introduction. One of the big four and undoubtedly having the fiercest fan base, Slayer is the thrash metal band from the 80s that your parents would send you to Bible camp for if you were caught listening to them. Several gold albums, Grammys, countless world tours, it's safe to say that Slayer is one of the greatest definitions of a metal band. After the surge of thrash in the 80s and even the early 90s while grunge was coming up, bands like Slayer still pushed on, sticking true to being the monsters of the genre that they were. Impossible guitar solos, unapologetic lyrics, and enough intensity to put professional wrestling promos to shame. Then new metal came. All kidding aside, there are great new metal bands, and especially ones that really broke through in the mid to late 90s. It was becoming the trend in music, you could tell. So much so in fact that Slayer took notice and realized this might be something worth looking into. Enter Diabolus in Musica, which is the pronunciation I'm going with. Slayer's attempts at new metal. If that's not enough to concern you, then I'm not sure what will. Truth be told, Slayer are very talented and creative, so why do they need to feel to fit into the new trend? That leads into the question of why am I covering this on Regretting the Past. Diabolus and Musica never even went gold. It only had good sales in the first week of its release. Well, for starters, even Slayer regrets it. From the words of Kerry King, that's the one record that I really paid not enough attention to because I was really bitter about what kind of music was popular. I thought it was very frat boy stuff, and maybe that's why it was popular, I don't know. So Diabolus didn't get as much attention from me because, you know, we didn't stay in focus. Looking back, we were just saying, alright, how do we make Slayer fit into today's society? But that's probably my least favorite record of the history. That's our Turbo. If it's good enough for Kerry King to talk bad about, it, it's good enough for me too. I get that Slayer was trying to adapt and conform to what was popular, but why? It feels like Slayer of all bands would be above that. I mean, why is this even covered? That would be my doing. Get out of the devil! Yes, Diabolus in Musica was my own personal sandbox idea for music. I was the influence in the music after all, and after years of thrash, I wanted to see if Slayer could change things up a bit. Why? To get out my message of evil, of course. If a favorite band of many metalheads out there hang on to their every word, and that band follows me, I figured I could use that to my advantage by having them infiltrate another style that was becoming relevant at the time. That is awful! You are evil! And how did you get my Skype contact? Who do you think runs Microsoft? <laughs> okay, let's get into Diabolus and Musica, otherwise known as the Devil in Music from Slayer. Okay. Okay, that's not bad for an opening to lead to something good. Yeah, it didn't lead to anything good. I feel like Bitter Peace is a good analogy of what to expect for the rest of Diabolus and Musica. A potential buildup in something that could be promising, but results in you scratching your head going, what? And then just being confused and also being disappointed because it doesn't resemble Slayer in the slightest. Don't get me wrong, there is a good solo three minutes in, so it's not like this is an unsalvageable mess. Lyrically, it's on par with the rest of Slayer's material. Sweet mercy, some of these lyrics. There is a sense of intensity and panic in it, but it doesn't really do much to stand out or leave an impact outside of the new singing and writing style along with how the music is laid out. Now that I have the devil here, let's talk about something that people really want to know. How much influence do you really have in metal music, specifically Slayer? Are you kidding? King and Hanneman were my scribes. Tom Araya was my voice in the world. They literally spread my message. 
Really? Slayer's employed by you? Who else could have made raining blood last for decades while subconsciously tricking listeners into following me? <laughs> wow. Whatever, though. What about the music on this album? This is a big change. I know. This was my way of spreading more of my evil. Everyone's so focused on the change in sound that they can't hear my hidden messages of destruction. <laughs> that does sound like a good plan. Is that Surge Tankian? Oh my gosh, it's Slayer of a Down! I don't even know where to begin with this. If I had never done this regretting the past or heard this album before, there is no way I would have pinned this as Slayer. I don't see any other way to classify this. It sounds like Serge Tankian screaming over bass and drums and some drop-down guitars, which is also odd to hear. What's crazy is that this album was released in 1998, the same year that System of a Down's self-titled studio debut album was released. It was even released less than a month after Diabolus and Musica. It's like it's all hit the scene at the same time. On top of that, Slayer and System of a Down toured together that year. Slayer really went all out with this new style and surrounded themselves with other bands that were doing the same. Somehow that loud shouting over a bass line became a huge deal really fast back then, both coming from a newer band like System and being tried out by one of the big four. Either that or Surge secretly recorded the vocals on this song and spliced them in without Slayer knowing until it was too late. I know that's a crazy conspiracy theory, but come on, really listen to this and tell me you don't hear it. On the musical side, there are several... Uh, breakdowns, I guess you can call it. A speed change doesn't even apply as much as it really does drastically change into a different feel when the bass roll comes in. That's when it hits you though. This really is Slayer New Metal. The guitar work is just an afterthought. I'm kinda speechless at this point, I was not expecting this. I mean, 1998 was the big time when post-grunge and new metal was really surging, and Slayer went with the new metal route. 98 was also the year where Creed really set off big, along with System of a Down. <laughs> I guess we should be thankful that Tom Araya sounds like Serge Tankian and not Scott Stepp. This one's not bad. I mean that too. I feel like Slayer's attempt at new metal and a different style comes through in Stain of Mind. The guitar riffs, while a bit lower than we're used to from Slayer, have a good rolling feel to them in the rhythm, and Tom's vocals stand out well with the track. Lyrically, yeah, the devil is really trying to stir up some madness here if he's responsible for all this. I mean, what you see here is only a sample. This is one of the better, if not the best, song on Diabolus and Musica. So while you are focusing on the rhythm and how heavy this song is, yeah, I get the devil's work now. To be honest, if Slayer was playing Stain of Mind live, I wouldn't mind hearing it. In fact, if it was ever playing around me, I wouldn't be instantly grossed out. I'd be fine with hearing this. Don't get me wrong, there's about 10 other Slayer songs I would prefer to hear before this one, but this really isn't that bad. I got a bad feeling we're back to the music that's gonna make me scratch my head and wonder what the heck Slayer was thinking. After a 50 plus second hard bass intro with some muffled spoken words, you get the actual music, and it's a bit of a sludgy playthrough on the riffs. It's hard to explain, but the production makes this all sound like it was originally meant to be played at a higher chord, but the tone is either lowered down in mixing or slowed down in production. The short solo at the 2 minute 45 second mark sounds like a solo even Slayer would scoff at for being easy. That's not to say it's bad, but it does not exactly let loose the dogs of war and rage for a song like Overt Enemy. Add that to the sound quality sounding a little bit like it's coming through a bad recording or play through a speaker system with way too much bass, and you get this. Slayer filler. I said at the beginning of this video that I love Slayer, and saying they have filler really is kind of messed up, but I don't know what else to call this. New metal filler? Wow, that's a phrase that sounds horrifying.
Okay, hearing the opening, I got excited because I thought it was going to pick up the speed a little. As Perversions of Pain, which also sounds like a dirty movie, goes on across three and a half minutes, I can at least tell what Slayer was going for in the new metal style as well as trying to stay Slayer. Is it good? I don't even know! You get some speed, the guitar solo comes in, then it's back to the odd drop and pace and the new metal shouts come back. Then we get some odd demonic singing leading to some drum rolls, and what the heck could this have been a great song if they had just focused? It's good for 30 seconds, goes off the rails, then jumps back on. Repeat that method a couple times, and you have this track. Okay, Mr. Devil, Lucifer, whatever. It's clear they were trying to make something heavier here. Why didn't they stick with it? I influenced them to go deeper into what was popular at the time, and what would become all the rage in that time period. At this point, I just wanted to see if I could actually get one of my best metal bands to give up what they were good at. And I did. It's hilarious! <laughs> but Slayer loves you! Why would you do that to someone who loves you? Because I'm the devil! I think it's hilarious! <laughs> You're a monster! <laughs> Okay, no more new metal after this for a while, guys. I'm burnt out. Holy crap, this album is a product of the times. Trying to look at the positives here, there is a good long bridge in the song, but everything before it feels like the royalty-free soundtrack to the times of new metal, a documentary. And all of the bands that came out of this era in the late 90s making that subgenre a staple in rock, I would not have expected Slayer to make something this rich in that sound. Tom sounds like he's giving it his all, but it's so overwhelming that the music sounds like it's in the background. Even the lyrics are straying a little more from typical Slayer fare to the new metal world of being hated and talking about anguish and apathy. Don't get me wrong, Slayer would do that anyway, but here it feels a little less offensive and a little more... uh... Well, some of it just sounds more teenage whiny, but with some satanic imagery thrown in. Wow, and I thought moms hated when their kids listened to Slayer before. This song would be their worst nightmare. Oh, what happened to Slayer? I've been trying to piece together and explain what feels so off in so many songs, and I think I can describe it through a comparison. Listen to Slayer's song Dead Skin Mask from 1990. There is a slower intro, well, slower for Slayer, that builds up tension and leads into a heavier and quicker groove that eventually becomes something epic. In Songs of Diabolus and Musica, they don't really lead into much of anything, or it just builds to something that sounds off and doesn't transition well. Slayer! As a fun fact, Desire is the one song on the album where the lyrics are solely written by Tom Araya and not King and Hanneman. That's just an interesting point because while Araya usually doesn't write as much and looking at all the lyrics, it does have a different writing scheme and feel. That being said, this song is rough. You keep hoping it cashes in and gives you something awesome, but it's underwhelming. The same bass and drum rhythm that's already been burned in your brain by this point, and the guitars sound like they only come in for a few segments to stand out. I feel like a song called Desire by Slayer should be brutal and haunting and dark. Instead, it's just... I don't know, maybe the lyrics are just kind of desensitizing me finally. Oh my gosh. The devil's plan is working. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Where has this been? Well, whatever, I'll take what I can get at this point. Unguarded Instinct has enough speed in parts, and you feel a bit more intensity. You actually get a decent build that the guitars go into something fun to hear. You do get an odd spoken word bridge again, but at this point I'll gladly put up with it. However, it kinda hit me at this point in the album playthrough on first listen that I have two songs out of eight that I can actually see being okay with hearing again, as opposed to just scratching my head and wondering why Slayer dived headfirst into the new metal pool. This song isn't bad, and it could work as a live track also. But, is it great? Not particularly. If the new metal pool really is a thing, then no one swims in that pool anymore after Fred Durst dove in and made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Betray you, damn you. 
Wow. The devil's not even trying to be subtle with these lyrics anymore. Also, what the heck is this song? The lyrics, yeah, they're exactly what you'd expect for a song title in the name of God by Slayer. But that almost feels like it was made just to build up to that chorus chant. Everything before it is just set to build up and everything after it is off the wall bonkers. Seriously, the last 45 seconds of this song gets crazy. I get the attempt at chaos, and that's in other great Slayer songs also, but when everything before the chaotic ending doesn't groove well and it's more of an odd rhythm that clashes with over-the-top vocals and a drop-down rhythm, it's all just maddening. Be honest, you'd still love Slayer, even if it was nothing but an insane album full of Carrie King solos that sounded mad. Dang it, you're right! <laughs> Not even two and a half minutes long, and Scrum, while setting a good opening pace for a few seconds, this song is just bonkers. Scrum is all over the place, with the vocal volume way higher in the first half. There are decent segments here, but wow, you really have to pluck them out of obscurity to get to them. They are also over very quickly. One thing I love about Slayer and many other metal bands is that the style and speed changes can occur at any moment while still being a fluid transition. I've talked about those transitions a little bit before on this video, but maybe not with that description. On Scrum, it's like the speeds are chaotic and almost stop and start instantly with no fluid motion through it. Imagine listening to your favorite thrash song, but randomly increasing the speed moments in the course of just two minutes. I like that there's a little more vibrance and creativity in the guitar shred, but it also clashes along with everything. It's hard to jump into this Scrum because it keeps moving so randomly. Get it? Jump into the scrum? Cause that's what you do? Rugby? I'm sorry, I'm really bad at these. Hey, it feels like the guitar work is a little more creative after two minutes. That's something, right? Yeah, well, that's all I can really get out of the Screaming from the Sky. That's a great song title, too, but also, wow, this one might be the biggest disappointment of a song I've ever heard from a band that I know can do better. Now it's starting to feel like segments from other tracks on Diabolus are being repeated. I can't say this is the worst thing I've ever heard because that's ridiculous to imply, but honestly, when you think Slayer, do you think this song? The riffs are generic. The lyrics are, well, nothing we haven't heard before from Slayer on this album. I'm new metaled out. I don't care what band it's by. This is a broken record at this point, and I don't mean that in the cool Matt Hardy way. I mean it as it's repeating itself. I never would have thought that listening to Slayer would make me feel so empty. I mean, these are the guys that wrote Raining Blood. Screaming from the Sky is like the TV friendly version of that. And there should never be a TV friendly version of Slayer. What's next, a TV-friendly version of Gwar? Okay, I feel like Slayer was trolling people at this point. Wicked is what finally broke me a little. Even though I knew the end was coming, I still was being dragged through this song. There is something to pick up about Wicked though, because this song sums up a lot of problems in this full album. With the intro and the riffs and the drum beat, it feels like the new metaliest of new metal, for lack of a better term. It combines all the shouting on top of bass and guitar riffs and a ton of cymbal bashing in the background. It goes beyond just another song that doesn't hit the mark, but it feels like everyone in Slayer on this track could be laying out something much heavier and energetic but this song is a dredge to get through. You get a solo about three minutes in, but even that feels like it's holding back on the creativity and passion that Slayer is capable of. Instead, you get a product of the times. What Diabolus and Musica is all about. It's about a band trying to play what's popular in exchange for the sound they're best at. Way, 
I'll say this, pointedly sounds a little more like Slayer, like I can actually see this being the band. It's funny how this is really ending the album this way too, because I was not expecting anything to come really resembling the band after hearing so much shouting and heavy bass and drums and dissing guitars and everything else. It was just a new metal explosion with a brand of Slayer on it. I'm going with the international version of this album if you're wondering about the track listing, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. This song is fine, but that's 3 out of 13. That's bad. There's no real other way to say it either. Any album you buy where you only get 3 good songs out of 13, you're not going to be a happy consumer. Really think about it today and if you were back in the 90s. Would you really want one of your favorite bands and a band that is well known for thrash to change their style up with the intention to see if they can fit into something new? They are not the only band to do this, and thankfully this album truly is a one-off in a sense because they would go to make heavier and stronger music. I get why Carrie King says it's their turbo. This is nowhere near the worst album I've ever heard. It's not even the worst metal or thrash album or anything really comparing to Regretting the Past. However, is it the worst Slayer album? Yeah, I really think so. I usually say like what you like. If you enjoy Diabolus and Musica, then enjoy it. I just feel they've done much better and will be remembered for much more than this 1998 attempt at something new. And now with Slayer announcing their final world tour this year, it's time for everyone to pay tribute to the band and see them live. They are pulling out all the stops and giving the tour of a lifetime for a final full run. Regardless if you were a fan of this heavy of music or not, Slayer is still a spectacle to see live. The clock is ticking on all our favorite bands, so do what it takes to catch them in their element. You can love a band like Slayer and not love everything they do, like Diabolic and Musica. No matter what the devil tries to convince you. Oh, don't worry. I still have plenty of evil plans outside of music. I'm about to go and bankrupt a bunch of businesses and have people blame millennials for it. Just like with Toys R Us. <laughs> oh yeah, well I got a metal lyric for you. To hell with the devil. Ha! <laughs> Gonna quote Striper on me? Get real. Who are people going to listen to? My Slayer or Christian Metal Striper? <laughs> Dang it, he's smart. And that was another episode of Regretting the Past. Big thanks to Malcolm Ray for helping get the devil to be a part of this video. Huge thanks to my patrons who are helping to support Rocks. You can help too and also get in on the rewards by checking out the Patreon link in the YouTube card and the description. Please subscribe, you can check out my concert photography on Instagram, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.